sea monsters, creatures from folklore believed to dwell in the sea and often imagined to be of immense size. The monsters can take many forms, including sea dragons, sea serpents, or even tentacled beasts. However, when we think of sea creatures such as the Kraken and the Leviathan, we think of ancient times, when the world was full of myths and legends, not to a time of modern warfare. Then what happened to German U-Boat 85 in the early hours of April 30th, 1918? What kind of creature did the captain and his crew purportedly see? And how did it almost sink his U-Boat, sending him and his crew to their watery grave? Hello, I'm Mike Droberg. I'm a Marine Corps veteran, filmmaker, history enthusiast, and investigator of the supernatural. And we will answer these questions on today's episode of Forgotten History. The North Channel that connects the Irish Sea with the Atlantic Ocean has long been a haunt of those wishing to prey on British shipping. At its narrowest point, the channel is just 12 miles across, creating an ideal bottleneck for pirates and privateers who for centuries targeted ships passing between Ulster and southwestern Scotland. However, in the early hours of April 30th, 1918, another type of ship killer emerged stealthily from the depths of the channel. This hunter was the German U-Boat 85, commanded by Captain Gunther Kretsch. For the previous two weeks, ever since it left its secret pen on the German island of Heligoland, U-Boat 85 had been patrolling the Irish Sea, looking to unleash its 10 torpedoes on merchant ships bringing vital supplies to Britain from the US and Brazil. However, much to Crutch's frustration, U-Boat 85 had not had much luck. Although other German U-Boats had sunk nearly 280,000 tons of Allied shipping that month, not one had been dispatched by Crutch. Accompanied by a few of his officers, he stood in the conning tower, scanning the waters through his binoculars by the light of the full moon, knowing that tonight would be the night his luck would change. But before he could target his next victim, U-Boat 85 was rocked by an almighty surge on the starboard side, followed by a terrific thud as if something landed on the deck. Kretsch looked down and to his bewilderment and horror saw a huge sea monster emerging from the water and climbing onto the side of his U-Boat. This beast had large eyes set in a horny sort of skull, Kretsch is reported to have said. It had a small head, but with teeth that could be seen glistening in the moonlight. Could this have been a remnant of the dinosaur age? Based on his description, it sounds like they encountered a Mosasaurus, an aquatic reptile that went extinct over 66 million years ago, with the Mosasaurus hafameni, the largest known species, reaching up to a size of 20 meters or 66 feet. If it was indeed a Mosasaurus, it could have given the U-boat and his crew a run for its money. Crutch claimed every man on the watch began firing a sidearm at the beast, but the animal had hold of the forward gun mount and refused to let go. Then, the weight of the monster was so great it was forcing the 730-ton submarine down into the water with its hatch still open. Crutch knew the U-boat would sink, so he ordered his crew to keep firing. Eventually, with its mighty body riddled with one too many bullets, the monster finally let go of the now mangled gun mount and slip back into the depths. Although the crew were safe from immediate peril, it soon became apparent that the creature had severely damaged the forward deck, leaving the U-boat incapable of diving. As dawn rose, U-boat 85 became a sitting duck for the many ships of the Royal Navy patrolling the channel. Among them was an armed drifter called the HMS Coriopsis, which cautiously approached the damaged submarine as it bobbed up and down. To the astonishment of the British ship's crew, the Germans were standing on the deck with their hands up, and were willing to surrender without a fight. It was only when the trembling seamen were on board and Kretsch told his tale that it became apparent quite why the Germans seemed to be so grateful to be taken prisoner. After smelling for schnapps and making sure the Germans were in fact sober, the crew members of the Coriopsis were still not sure whether to believe their captives or not, but the story of the sea monster and U-Boat 85 has endured. But nearly a century later, it looks as if the secrets of the U-Boat 85 may finally be revealed. It was announced by energy firm Scottish Power that engineers laying undersea cables have discovered the wreck of U-Boat 85 lying close to the last position reported by the Coriopsis. Although no photograph of the submarine has been taken, a remarkably clear sonar image certainly shows the unmistakable form of the 180-foot craft lying 340 feet below the surface. 
Unfortunately, the image is not sufficiently defined to show whether the foredeck had been damaged by the monster in the way supposedly described by Kretsch. But plenty of locals have maintained that U-Boat 85 could well have been set upon by a savage sea serpent. That's a tongue twister. Among them is Gary Campbell, the keeper of official sightings record for the Loch Ness Monster. The area of the sea where the attack took place has a history of sea monster sightings that have ranged from the north coast of Wales to Liverpool Bay, he said. What the captain said could well be true. It's great to see how Nessie's saltwater cousin clearly got involved in helping with the war effort. She even managed to do the damage without anyone being killed. Unsurprisingly, such claims have been scoffed at by others. Peter Roper of British Power said, I'm probably on the side of the historians who believe that the capture of the vessel was more straightforward than a sea monster attack. A sea monster attack by submarine may be one of the most fanciful excuses of all times. So what is the real truth behind the sinking of U-Boat 85? The notion of a sea monster appearing off the Irish and Scottish coasts in the latter days of the First World War seemed far too unusual and intriguing of a story not to dig into further. But there's a lack of any original document or newspaper report that contained the words supposedly spoken by the U-Boat captain. Kretz himself left very little trace. He died of unknown causes at the age of 33 in March 1919. And his career as a submarine captain was relatively undistinguished. So if it was impossible to find the source of the sea monster story, where could the truth be found? Well, the answer lied deep in the vaults of the National Archives and Records Administration, NARA, in the United States. At the end of the Second World War, the Allies captured the entire records of the German Navy from 1850 to 1945 and copied them onto 4,317 rolls of microfilm now stored at NARA's site in Maryland. An American naval historian and retired detective from the San Jose Police Department in California called Dwight R. Messimer had found the answer in an obscure 2002 tomb called Bersholin, or the missing World War I U-boat losses. The file contains at least four interviews with crew members, including Kretsch himself. But did any of them mention a monster? And if they did not, did any of them report anything strange or outlandish? In his account, Kretsch recalled how he decided to crash dive the U-boat after he spotted the Royal Navy patrol boats. The navigator reported that the conning tower hatch was closed, but as we went under, heavy flooding occurred through the hatch. Now, unable to close the hatch, the submarine was clearly in trouble. Water poured from the conning tower into the U-boat, causing the pumps, batteries, and electric motors to fail. To make matters even more dangerous, the air was starting to fill up with chlorine gas emitted by the flooded batteries, which meant the crew were either going to drown or be poisoned to death. The only option was to surface and quickly. Kretsch ordered the ballast tanks to be blown and the U-boat rose slowly. However, that did not mean the crew was safe. Senior stoker Julius Gottschammer reported, We opened the watertight door into the control room and managed to make our way against the inrushing water into the control room and exit the boat through the conning tower. In fact, it is Gottschammer who held the key to why water had managed to enter the boat from the conning tower. And he laid blame squarely on Kretsch. Gottschammer said Kretsch had insisted on the installation of a heater in the officer's compartment. He said the cables to power it had to be run into the control room through the conning tower, compromising its ability to be completely sealed. The result was that the new cables allowed water to flow unhindered from the conning tower. Had these new cables not been in place, only the conning tower would have been flooded, which would have posed no danger to the submarine. At the surface, the submarine came under heavy fire from the Coriopsis. We could not return fire because our ammunition was underwater and the water was rising in the boat, said Kretsch. The crew was taken off in rowboats. The British Navy soon picked up the crew. The last to leave were Kretsch and his navigator who scuttled U-Boat 85 rather than allow the satisfaction of a kill to the enemy. U-Boat 85 along with all its secret documents and the code book sank 260 feet, Kretsch recalled. So the truth is, U-Boat 85 lays at the bottom of the North Channel because its commander wanted to keep warm in his quarters and not because of a mysterious sea monster. Had the cable not been installed, it is likely that the submarine could have made its escape. It is not known how Kretsch's superiors reacted, but I'm sure they weren't happy. So, the source of the myth was Kretsch himself, who felt unable to admit that he had lost his boat for such a stupid and trifling reason. Far better, perhaps, to lay the blame on a sea monster than on a desire to keep his fussies warm. Thanks for watching today's episode of Forgot History. Please like, share, and subscribe. Send us your questions or comments and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Let us know if you have any show ideas. We're always looking for new topics to discuss, and we'd love to hear from you. Thanks again, 
Until next time.